I'm so excited to share this interview that I had with Julie Newman, who is the CEO of Jewel Branding and Licensing. I've been licensing with Jewel Branding since 2013, and Julie started Jewel in 2010. And not only do I respect her licensing knowledge, but I really admire how she's built a female owned and mostly female operated business with um, that started as one person and is now regularly on entrepreneurial and small business lists in magazines like Inc. and Entrepreneur. So I'm super excited to share this interview with you and we can all benefit from her licensing and agent experience. Well, I am so excited to have the opportunity to interview Julie Newman, who is the founder and the CEO of Jewel Branding and Licensing. And Jewel Branding and Licensing is a licensing agency, and um, they have been named the top 20 global licensing agent by Licensed Global Magazine. They have a ton of amazing artists on their roster, including um, Kelly Ray Roberts, Buffons and Broken Hearts, Etta V, even the F Frank Lloyd Wright Institute. So um, I actually am also on that roster. I've been with Jewel since uh, 2013. And today I'm getting the exciting chance to interview Julie and learn more about um, the agency and licensing in general for, for everyone to, to learn about. So hi, Julie, welcome, thank you. <laughs> I know. Hi, Elizabeth. It's great to see you as always. And um, thanks for having me and excited to, to talk with you today. Yeah, I'm very excited too. I think I'm going to learn a lot despite having being despite being part of the agency for so long. There's just, you know, I'm, I'm excited to hear the answers to some of these questions. So first of all, um, if you can give me a little background, what made you start your agency? You know, what got you into licensing and why did you decide to start this agency and how long ago? Yeah, sure. So um, I started the agency in 2008. Um, and before that, I actually how I got into licensing is I met the, the, the gentleman um, that started the Thomas Kincaid company along with Tom, Thomas Kincaid. And so I worked with him for five years and we did, we licensed Thomas Kincaid. We also did a lot of celebrity licensing like Heidi Klum and um, Christina Ferrari and a, a couple of others. And, um, you know, we were there for, I was there for five years and 2008 obviously was a very tough year, but huge recession. And it was kind of like, it was kind of, it came to a natural ending point with me working with them. And I was like, well, you know, I, I really like to start my own agency. And if I'm gonna do it, I actually wanna work with artists that I thought had really great art and I would go buy something with their art on it. Um, and, uh, so that's really was like the impetus to get it going. And, um, I went to Surtex and I was like, I don't, I don't know who's buying this stuff. Um, I, I mean, I didn't mean it like, I don't mean it like that bad, but I just, I knew I, that my customer, I did not see art that was for me. Um, and so that, that just kind of really, and then I, I did it and then there was no looking back. Yeah, I feel like the like Surtex used to be a lot more very traditional artwork. I yes. think that's the difference. You, Jewel is very trend forward, a lot of modern, really modern artwork. And, uh, you know, when we think about licensing, I feel like the old school licensing is these like beautifully traditional painted portraits of Santa Claus or like, right. or Thomas, you know, it's the whole Thomas Kincaid it's, vibe. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. So um, yes, I can definitely see how your agency is, is different from that vibe. So that's interesting. And, and so I've been with you guys for seven years. And so that you guys are 12 years old. Yep, so for a good portion old. of it, and I have just seen so much incredible growth through that time for you guys like it's been really great to be a part of that because you know you when I started you know you had much fewer artists but also you had you know one or two three people maybe working at your agency and now you guys are you know what seven no like 10 12 employees of us. Yeah. 12 yeah, yeah exactly yeah. so you guys are big business now which I love it's awesome to see 
Yeah, no, it was interesting because, you know, when I started the agency, it was just me um, and I was just like, oh, this is fun. And I had just had my um, first child. So I was home and um, and then it just started to kind of grow from there. And then I um, added some amazing people that um, have really helped grow the agency. Um, Alana Walensky was like the first um person that I hired that had been in the licensing industry for many, many years on bigger brands. So she really brought a very corporate um, branding and art branding experience to the agency. And that opened up us up to a lot, new, a lot of new customers and licensed and in brands. Um, and then Beth uh, Hooker joined us and she was from Elvis Presley. And then um, Samira joined us from CMG. So I felt like we just really got a great team on board that, um, had great contacts in the industry and were really good, strong account managers and sales. And then um, Greg Wyman, um, who has been in the you know, home industry for 35 years, um, he's been amazing at bringing home textile opportunities to our business. And so anyways, it's just kind of like, it, everybody's like, well, did you have a business plan? And I was like, no, <laughs> I had no business plan. I literally was just like, okay, I'm gonna do this. And, um, and then, yeah, here we it are. Happened. I, mean, that, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, isn't that the always the story kind of, right? I mean, not always, yeah. some people are very focused, but I feel like you just, you know, we dive into these things and we had no idea where we're gonna land, but uh, persistence is pretty much the main thing, right? Exactly. Um, I wanted to uh, start with talking a little bit about uh, agencies because the question, you know, the thing that I get a lot from artists is like, what is it like working with an agency? And having talked to other artist friends who are with different agents, like my experience is limited to working with you guys. Um, but, you know, different agencies do things different ways. And so there can often really be different business models, um, you know, and I was just wondering as, an artist, if an artist signed with you guys tomorrow, with Jewel tomorrow, what can they expect in working with you? What are some of the things that, you know, Jewel does um, as part of your, you know, licensing program? Yeah, well, first of all, all of everybody on our team sells for all of our artists. Um, we all have different contacts. Um, we work with different customers. And so um, when you work with us, you're really going to work with the whole team. Um, and then we also have a royalties person, Leslie. Uh, we have graphic designers that can help um, create product mock-ups and um, also uh, we have uh, Meredith Counts, who's our creative director, and she sends out trends to the artists to make sure that they're always creating artwork that's on trend. Um, it's really important for us as an agency to always be um, showing the, the latest and greatest and best artwork out there um, because that's what keeps customers coming back to us over and over again. And I will say that one of the things that um, I think we're, we're good at is making sure we try to make sure that no artist that we have competes with another artist. There's always going to be similarities, but we really try to make sure that each person stands out in their own way. So, and, and many of our manufacturers have commented on that. They, they come to us because they feel like it doesn't all look the same. Yeah. And then they can literally pick 10 different artists and they have 10 different looks. And so um, you know, and I feel I mean, somehow or other, if you look at our agency, we always get a little bit of um, uh, harassment in the industry in a fun way because we're, we are all women mostly, except for Greg, um, and most of our clients are women. So we're kind of like when somebody comes in looking for wild animal art or um, paintings, we, we really, we just, that's just not what we have. Um, we're not known for that. And so, uh, but we are known for on-trend art that works very well in all kinds of categories, just, yeah. just not that type. Yeah. And not traditional art. We have some, but not like, I think other agencies have more traditional styles. Um, some have a good mix. It just really depends. Yeah. I think some of the the bigger agencies are like that have a lot of artists that they tend to have more traditional art. And then sort of the, I feel like, you know, most of my uh, kind of contemporaries in the surface pattern world that I know are with smaller agencies that are a little bit more trend forward, but I can see how like the bigger, bigger name licensing agencies do tend to be a little bit more traditional. And trends are my favorite thing. So I'm always talking about, you know, I think artists sometimes get nervous about being too trendy because it's like, you know, they don't want to seem dated shortly after, but, you know, trends sort of make the industry and it's like what, it's why people continue to buy new, new looks. So um, that's, you know, that is, 
a great you know basis for for selling your artwork for sure um I'm just thinking, and also, so I would say too, like, I mean, what's great about the, I think the art licensing industry is, you know, I've worked with some clients like you, you seven years, um, others for 10 years. Um, and I find that the art is still, the art they created 10 years ago is still licensable today. Even if you just take and update the colors, it's, it's really your intellectual property that, that you have that is, um, that can be used in so many ways. And um, 10 years after the fact, I think that's what's, really fun about this business and we're always surprised sometimes when we get an image we're like wow and the artists too like oh my god I made that so many years ago they're interested in that and I'm like yeah I know it's you know some of them are timeless um so that's that's fun um the other thing I would say too that I think jewel branding is really strong at is our technology for our artists you know I feel like we give our artists access to log in and see like what customers are looking at their art and see their contracts so we try to keep you guys as informed as possible on what's going on within your own business and and uh, you guys get to see what's trending for your work what people are looking at the most um, which I think is helpful for you guys yeah it really is that has been a big difference um, of you know having started with you guys seven years ago you building out your website and the technology that you guys have invested in and created um, really sets you apart I think from other other agencies because you do now we can sign in and see yeah exactly what other um what manufacturers are looking at we can see our contracts everything you know everything's more uh open so one thing I would say about working with agents that I've heard from other people and and this was something that I felt as well that people who have not worked with agents might not realize is that you don't always have all the details about everything that's going on with your art. In fact, most of the time you do not, right? So people are like, well, what, you know, what item licensed this? And, you know, you, you, I get questions and I'm like, uh, I don't know, ask my agent. <laughs> like, and it's not that I'm not interested or that I'm like passing it off. It's that you guys have 50 artists and you don't need to, you know, you don't have the time to update me on, um, you know, this company looked at this greeting card of yours, you know, um, when you start out as a new artist with an agent, you want to know all the things you're like, what happened with that presentation? Did this, you know, did this company give a second look at any of my art? You know, you want all the details because you need some sort of reaction of what, how your art is faring in the market. Um, and I had to learn to let go of that. And I think a lot of artists have to learn to let go of that basically once they start working with an agent, but having that um, technology that you've introduced in the last couple of years where I can sign in and at least see which of my designs are more consistently being pulled as, you know, possibilities or whatever, um, that has given me a little bit more insight into what's really going on so yeah and i mean and that we do get that a lot i mean it's really hard as an agent to update you on everything because a lot of times we don't we don't even know like you know it's frustrating for us like we send out we think of amazing presentations to manufacturers and and then silence or you know you meet with somebody at the licensing show or surtex or whatever and and you have this amazing meeting and they like everything and then you tell the artist about it that it's such a great meeting and then I never hear from the manufacturer again. I mean, it's so it's really it's 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 definitely can be challenging. And so that's why I feel like the website at least gives you as much information as you possibly can get to hope hopefully gives you an idea more than you ever had before. Right, definitely. And that's just, I mean, that's just the way the industry is. There's, it's, yeah, of course, it's nothing against any agent that does that, right. but it is something to be aware of if you're a new artist getting in to working with an agent because you might, you know, be like, oh, my agent doesn't tell me anything. I'm in the dark, blah, blah, blah. But that's actually really super common. And probably there aren't very many agents that are keeping you up to date on every single little detail because. Yeah. Who has time for that? <laughs> um, and because uh, who knows, right? As you said, with the retailers and all that stuff. Um, and the other thing I wanted to point out is you guys mostly do, I could be wrong, this could just be my experience, but you guys mostly do royalty based licensing. You don't do a lot of flat fee licensing. Is that true or is that not true? Yeah, I mean, I would say 95% of our contracts are royalty based. Um, we always try to do royalty based, but there, sometimes though we do do flat fee. I mean, sometimes it doesn't make sense to go through a whole contract for something that's not going to earn a lot of royalties over the next three years or four years. Um, and so we'd rather save the time um, 
calculating all the monthly payments and sending it out and just do the flat fee. Um, and I do think that things, there used to be deals. Um, I think the nature of the industry is changing where every, the product cycles are turning so fast and it's not like you create a collection and it's in the market for 10 to 15 years. It's just not how it is today. Um, so I think products are turning so fast that it doesn't make, if it's only gonna be one or two quarters of royalties, you might as well just do a flat fee. Um, right. So, I mean, we're always open to new business models and, and new ways to make it easier because I, I do feel that sometimes the art licensing industry, there is a lot of paperwork. There is a lot of tracking. There's, um, and it's sometimes not the most 100% efficient um, business. I mean, I know agents that work from Excel spreadsheets. Um, I, you know, and it's, it's just, it's hard. Um, a lot to do. Right. Yeah. yeah. And actually I was just looking at my, uh, I just actually had, um, Leslie today pull some information. Cause I really don't have a lot of, I mean, I, we get the quarterly reports, but I was really curious to know the amount that I had earned per licensee over the course of my working with them. So, mm -hmm. you know, I have these licensees who, maybe have one or two of my cards on on file that they're selling and I get you know 50 cents every quarter or something like that right and it's like what is and so then when you see it all added up it's a big old 50 dollars or whatever and it's like well a flat fee for 150 dollars for a card could have been a win right, right. so exactly um, license yeah. the actual royalties isn't always the like you know going to be the clear winner as far as you know getting paid the most right exactly and there's nothing worse than getting like a 99 cent check i mean especially <laughs> for us as an agent because by the time we cash it process it figure out who we owe um which artist we owe you know the amount to it's it's literally um it's just painful silly yeah exactly i see what you're saying um all right well one question that i i I asked, you know, my audience on Instagram, I said, I'm going to be talking to Julie and what question, you know, what questions should I ask her? And by far the million dollar question that everyone had was, what do you look for an artist when you're, you know, reviewing to potentially sign and can you sign me? And is she, you know, I mean, I was getting plenty of requests. I was like, oh, I'll see, oh, I'll see what I can do. But what, what do you look for when, when you get a, you know, a submission or, um, you know, someone reaches out to potentially license or become one of your artists. Yeah, no, you know, we're always looking for new artists because we have an unlimited um, pipeline of people need, needing new artwork all the time. Um, I think for us, when we're looking at artists, we always look at um, ones that have a large portfolio. It's really hard to get started with, you know, 20, 30, 50 images. Those 50 images might be amazing, but they, um, they're only going to get us so far because they're going to get taken up so fast and then there's, we're not going to be able to do anything for a while until you generate more art. Um, so we look for our, a broad portfolio. We look for a portfolio that includes um, all different types of uh, seasonal imagery from holiday to birthday to um, St. Patrick's Day. We look for just a portfolio that has a lot of art that is very commercially um, viable for all different types of products. And then we also look for people that have patterns in addition to um, you know, more of the hero sized images, individual art pieces, um, you know, our biggest categories in licensing are um, stationary from mm -hmm. calendars, dated goods, uh, journals, and greeting cards uh, to home, which is a lot of pattern. Um, and then, you know, gift, gift categories. Um, so we really, I, and I really want artists you know, when they're approaching us to, to understand where they are, where they see their art in the marketplace, you know, go to a, a Target, go to a Bed Bath and & Beyond and um, take a look at what's being sold. And if your art looks nothing like what's out there, I mean, sometimes that can be a good thing because it's a white space, it's a new point of difference, but if it's, if it's inappropriate artwork or, um, it, or there's, something inappropriate like bad language we, we don't we don't sell a lot of bad language greeting cards to um target or walmart they, they just don't take them so um just being very aware of where your market is and and um actually do your retail we call it retail reconnaissance go yeah. out there see what's out there and um i think what's frustrating for me um i, I think the most frustrating thing for me as an agent is when i have artists 
asks, I don't know anything about licensing. Can you tell me everything you know? And it's like, I mean, and that it's really hard because there's, but I also feel like there's a lot of information out there already. Yeah. Um, um, so like, I, you, I expect you, if you're approaching for repre representation, I expect them to know what it is and know what we do. Um, and, and that, that's, that goes a long way. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Doing your research is so important. And, and, uh, it's interesting to hear you say about having a, a larger portfolio, which it, it totally makes sense for an agent. Um, I would ask, you know, has that changed over the years or has the competition for, for, you know, becoming an artist who works with Jewel, you know, gotten more difficult over the years or like, do you get a lot more submissions now than you used to or what, you know, has it gotten harder? Because people always ask me like, how do you work with you? You know, like, how did you, how do you find an agent? And I'm like, well, I can tell you how 2013 Elizabeth found an agent, but like, yeah. I don't think that that's 2021 success, right? So right. could you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, no, I definitely think it's harder. I think the competition is harder. I think Instagram has made it way harder than it used to be um, because there's so many artists out there and manufacturers actually go directly to Instagram to find artists as well. So it's made our jobs tougher. Um, and also our, our stable of artists is we already have a good group of artists. Yeah. So we, and again, it goes back to, we don't want to compete with our existing clients. So if you, if we feel like it crosses over too much to any of our existing artists, then we're not going to, we're not going to take that chance. Um, and so we're very careful of that. Um, and, and just, try, and so that's probably why it's harder. Like if you're a new agent and you're starting out, you're open to 15 new artists because you need 15 different looks right. with us. We kind of like already have, have a good that, collection. Right. Yeah. So that's, that's it is tougher. That makes sense. And, and, you know, usually I say to, uh, people who are like thinking about pitching to new, uh, companies that you don't need a large portfolio because better to get started and start making those connections even if you don't have everything but I can see how having a larger portfolio for an agent it's like you want to get started and you want to get moving so so having that artwork um, you know ready is is so useful I think that what you're saying really speaks to you know artists taking always take things personally it's hard not to take things personally you know and I do tell people that too is like just because you're not hearing anything or just because you're getting rejected it's not like your art isn't good enough necessarily it could no, be not there are four watercolor artists on the roster and you're yeah. a gorgeous watercolor artist but too exactly. late, you know? like right. that's so that's it's really hard when we get because we get a lot of great submissions uh, and some were like oh we're so close but then it's just too close to another artist that we have so it can be painful um to, you know saying no mm -hmm. and and also sometimes too like you know it depends on how many artists we've just signed if we've just signed three artists um it's really hard for us to pick up another artist for another three to four months because it, we, we really want to take our time. We want it. We onboard them. We add all our artwork to our website. It takes time. Yeah. And we also want to pitch them to our contacts. So it, timing is everything as well. Um, and, you know, sometimes, I mean, resubmit. I mean, there's no reason yeah. not to, you know, like, and, and like I said, our portfolio changes. So if somehow we lose an artist or, um, you know, one artist isn't working out, then, Hey, she could, you know, somebody can send a new art to them. Oh, that's perfect. We need that now. Yeah, um, exactly. So it, it really does um, make sense to just keep at it. And if it's what you believe in and want to do, then, um, hey, I'm, I, I think that's the best thing is just keep going after it. Totally. I agree. Um, so, you know, people, when they are getting started with licensing artists are often like, should I get an agent? Should I get an agent? They like, can't figure out if it's if it's the right fit for them um and i do try to advise them but honestly it's so such a personal choice but have you found any types of artists or designers that really aren't a great fit for having an agent um well yeah i mean some agents are i mean some of our artists haven't worked out um and it's and it can be um they don't like not knowing everything that's going on with their artwork or they're not um, 
comfortable with where we want to sell the artwork to, um, or they, they're not open to all distribution channels, um, or they don't like changes to their art. Um, you know, you, you just have to be flexible. You work with, yeah, you have to be very flexible yeah. to um, e either way as an artist, whether you work with an agent or not. I, I do think working with an agent, um, if you if you are an artist that is very good and savvy on the business and contract side as well, mm -hmm. I think it's I think you can definitely do the business um, and, and handle it yourself. Um, but then you also have to do really good at sales, and so it's like you're really doing five jobs if you're running your own art licensing business, right? Um, that's that's why everyone's so tired. <laughs> right? No, it is. It's a lot of work and following up because um, you know even we know these people. We've met with them for ten years, but they still don't answer all our emails. You know, and we, manufacturers are busy. They're running around like crazy, and we're trying to send them new things all the time. Um, so, it, and it takes a while for an artist, I think, to make um, connections because I think manufacturers want to know that you're going to continually provide new art. And for a manufacturer to, you know, set up the process of a contract and a royalty reporting process and all of that, they want to make sure that that artist is going to be with them long term because it's costly to do that, you know, and with an agent, it can be easier sometimes because they already work with us on 20 other artists or 10 other artists and they know they're going to get a consistent, it, it'll be worth it. Um, it's almost like we give a stamp of approval that this artist is going to be, um, What's the word I'm looking for? They're, they're going to be a, <laughs> yeah. And, and there are some artists that I think if you're not good at follow-up, then you, you really shouldn't be doing your, your business side of the art. Yeah. Yeah. Follow-up is everything. Persistence is definitely everything. And also a reminder to people who are watching this, you know, having an agent isn't the automatic key, like, okay, now I don't have to Phew, like I'm done, you know, <laughs> like I don't have to worry. Money is just going to start rolling into, you know, whatever, rolling into our my bank account. And all I have to do is make pretty things and I'm good. Like that's also not true. You still have to, you know, be looking at trends and working hard to make great art, but also, you know, promoting yourself in any way that you can do and, and working with the agent to sort of assess you know, where there might be holes that your art could fit into and, you know, just all the things that you can do to be helpful and, and get your art out there too. So, yeah. Um, what is one thing that you wish every artist who signed on with Jewel, now maybe we've kind of touched on this, but every artist who signed on with Jewel was already aware of about the licensing process, potentially being flexible. I mean, you kind of did say that, but if there's anything else that you wish that keep people came up with the knowledge of? Yeah, I, I think that just that it's very fluid. Um, it, you know, it's not a very, it, I mean, there's can be, I need this artwork right away. Um, and a lot of times we get that. And um, it, it's just, it's not a, you're not going to get approvals all the time for your art. Um, because sometimes manufacturers are moving too fast. Now we always urge, um, urge our manufacturers to send us approvals, but it just, it's not always a scripted process and it's not always, um, it, you know, everybody's like, well, that's in the contract. I, I understand that, but it's, it's not always um, exact. And I think that's really, it's helpful to just know, like you said, being flexible um, and understanding that everybody's working really hard. You know, manufacturers have the smallest creative teams now than they ever have. And everybody's just overworked and trying to do the best they can to to get some great products out there. And so, and that doesn't make it one hundred percent right. It just it's just the right. nature yeah, of no, it is. Right. Yeah, And so, just so approvals being when you send your artwork and they're putting it on a product, they're changing. They might need to change things to fit the format, or they might need to change colors because that's going to work better for their market or whatever it is. And in theory, they're supposed to send it back to the artist so they can sign off on it, but that doesn't always happen. So, just kind of giving more information for people who might not know. Yeah, no, yeah, thanks for filling that in. And, and I'd also say that it really, there, if a retailer wants colors changed on your artwork, the only way you're gonna make money on that artwork is if you make the color changes and resubmit it. Yep. <laughs> there is yep. no like, oh no, I don't really feel comfortable making those changes. Great, well then that won't, um, and then you'll lose out on the opportunity. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. That's, it's just business. That's, that's another thing that I'm always kind of trying to hammer home have after having worked in house, I just know, cause I've seen those decisions from the inside as well. And I've seen like us reject things just because it's not blue, you know, or whatever. And just like, right. so I do know that. And it really is just business. It's not always about, you know, how, how, uh, you know, talented you are or whatever it is. So that's just another reminder kind of, I like to remind people that because, you know, it does, you, you take it personally about your own art and I understand why people do that, but um, it really is, you know, if you're looking to make money with your art, it's a commercial, it's a commodity, right? So you have to be willing to, to be flexible about that. Yes. Um, so speaking, earlier about sort of the olden days of licensing now the the licensing industry that used to be more traditional that you worked in before you moved into um into your own agency you know i do know some artists who have been on the licensing scene for a really long time and they you know there's definitely no doubt that the industry has has changed a lot in that time and obviously that's all been speeded up by 2020 and and you know things going sideways with this year so right, yeah, was, at least what are some of the things that you might have that you've noticed changing over your time that you've been in business um and then also related to that how is jewel moving forward in COVID times yeah i mean definitely things have changed um like, like i think i mentioned before the shorter product life so the need for more and more art is is bigger now than ever. Um, it, it just, it's, I, uh, it's, it's amazing how, yeah, I can meet with somebody um, and then two weeks later they'll be like, what's new? I, I'll show them art and then two weeks later, what's new? And I'm like, well, it's just been two weeks. I, I mean, we don't have a lot of new, but they always are looking for um, new art. So that's kind of, it, I, it just, it seems like it's just run, the hamster wheel is just running faster and faster. Yeah, I don't know if that's good or bad, honestly. It's good I know. In the idea that like, oh, they still need our services. It's bad in the idea that like, who can create at that pace, you know, like that's right. just not reasonable, but anyways. It, <laughs> right, exactly. And, um, and the products, like I said, in and out um, and on to the next. Um, and then there are just fewer advances. You know, we get a lot of we, we get a, what's called call outs um, where, you know, retailers um, put together trend boards that they send to their manufacturers and then the manufacturers send them to us so we can pull art from our archives or have our artists work on these trend boards and put together some designs that go along these trends. So um, that's different because we nor normally manufacturers would create the lines and then share it to the retailers and the retailers would pick it. Um, and it's actually just turned all the way around mm. retailers drive the product design now so that's a you know definitely a big change yeah yeah and then going into covid times you guys have you guys already have such a great digital um you know back end as we've been talking about and I know that you have um, some new tools that you have been working with and one of those is available to artists who aren't your, you know, not just jewel artists, uh, and that's called Artonimo. And can you give us a little background about that software? It's pretty exciting. Yeah, so I would say, you know, the last seven years, Jewel Branding has spent a lot of time and energy building a website infrastructure that can handle a lot of images. Um, it can handle contracts and contacts of different manufacturers. Um, and uh, request an artwork request process. And so what we thought was that this, this um, software would actually be great um, for other artists to use that wanna manage their own business and get their artwork out there. It, it gives you a professional place to show your art. I think one of the things that's difficult, you go to an artist's website, sometimes they'll show their portfolio, um, but you can't search it, you can't, um, look by a keyword and and that you know sometimes if a manufacturer needs to find giraffes they don't want to go through 20 pages of um, website they want to put in a word and find giraffes right um, so we've made the software available and we have we're also uh, promoting the software to agencies because you know as I mentioned there's a lot of agencies there's no software to run an art licensing business there is software out there that manages brands and you know larger clients and Disney's of the world but that's not affordable for um, artists. And so we're really just trying to make, trying to get some tools available for artists to help promote themselves, 
and um, make their jobs easier as um, professional artists. I love that because people do, people are always like, what, what filing system should I, you know, I see that question a lot of like, what filing system should I use? How do you organize your website? Like what categories should I have? You know, there's all these different questions around that. And um, having that, you know, searchability and the ability to tag, I use Adobe bridge to tag my work. That's internally, you know, so that I can look for things that are, you know, if I need giraffes and I like, what did I do six years ago? Um, But, but to have that, you know, be able to be, uh, you know, outward facing for, for a manufacturer to look through um, is, is exciting. So um, Artonimo it's called, and I will put the link in the description about that. And then the other thing that you guys are doing, um, because of COVID basically something really exciting that I just found out about like literally yesterday um, called Showcase, which is sort of making up for the fact that there's not really going to be a Surtex this year and that, you know, we don't have the normal trade show cycle that we we are used to. Um, Do you want to talk about Showcase a little bit? Yeah, no, we just, you know, we were brainstorming ideas at our team retreat on how we can um, get the industry together. Um, I I know everybody is tired of Zoom, but I think we're, it's going to be here to stay for the next several months. So we might as well take advantage of it. And so we wanted to put together an event that had a lot of um, webinar content for artists, for licensees. Um, So there's going to be an art licensing 101 class, essentially all the tools and information you need to know to license your art as well as a trend classes um, on upcoming trends uh, for manufacturers, as well as artists. We're gonna be demoing uh, the Artonimo software platform to, um, for artists as well. So you can see everything that it does. Um, we're also gonna have a couple Meet the Artists um, webinars. So you can ask um, questions to some of the artists that are out there that have been very successful um, licensing. So we're just really trying to make it an event that a lot of people want to go to. And then also, I mean, the main purpose is to show all our new art, you know, to to have a chance to, you know, get manufacturers there to, to look for new content. And um, if you are an artist on Artonimo, you can upload all of your artwork there and manufacturers um, can go and check it out. Yeah, that is cool. So is what's the, um, so Artonimo is not really an app that you're, it's not something that you're downloading onto your computer. It's it's all online, right? It's all online, yeah. And, and what's cool about, I, so one of the best parts of Artonimo or, or one of the best things we ever did as an agency um, was we designed an app for our iPad to show our art. And I will, I mean, that changed our lives because we used to go to um, like Surtex and licensing show. And the follow-up from those shows would take us a week. Each each salesperson would take a week because we would actually write down the images. We'd pull together all the PDFs. We'd email them. Yes, yeah. And what's cool about this app is literally you can show people your art, create a, an art box and share it with them under their account. And immediately you've done all of your follow-up in like five seconds. Um, While you're seeing your lives in Surtex, right? Just like- yeah. In downtime. Yeah, that's awesome. It, it was, it was, um, so it's a great tool for artists to show their art when we actually get back to real live events. Um, and also it, it's just your, your biggest asset as an artist is your portfolio and the easier you make it for people to see it, search it, look at it, um, the, the better your the better you look to the industry, to the manufacturer, to, to anybody that's looking at it. Right. Ease is like the hundred percent the thing, right? Like people yeah. don't have time. And that's, that's like the only, that's, you know, I have always like, what do art directors need? It's like, they need more time. Like you need to yeah. do it as easy as possible. You need, it needs to be a snap for them to find what they're looking for or, or get the idea or the sense of what your, uh, you know, style is or whatever it is, all those things. It just needs to be easy. So, yeah. So that is cool. And so showcase is going to be early February. Is that Yeah, true? February 16th and 17th. And we've already uh, posted a schedule on the site. Uh, it's on our, if you go to autonomo.com and then on, on the menu bar, it's called showcase and you'll see it's a schedule of events, but we are adding content um, and always open to ideas uh, on, on webinars to have. So if you guys have any suggestions, you know, let Elizabeth know and, and she can let me know. Yeah. I know her number. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. 
Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Not only did I get to learn some new stuff, but I know that people, when they see this interview, are going to be so excited to learn all this great information and they're going to go study up on licensing so they don't so they come correct when they send yes. you an email and yes. um no which is uh, they should they should you have to do your research before you're pitching to anyone agent manufacturer whoever it is you need to do your research and and that can be time consuming when you're trying to be scattershot about it like i just you know you're sending out a lot of emails or you're not sure what you know what the right fit is going to be but um you got to do your research for sure and um yeah so anyways thank you so much i really appreciate it and i am thank you for having forward, me of course i'm looking forward to um showcase and learn you know seeing how that goes down and i'm also uh going to put the information for that and artonimo in the description so check it out thank you so much yeah thank you that was a great interview, but I have one more question for Julie. I am totally obsessed with learning about pricing and income in this industry. And so of course I had to ask her a question around what you can really expect to earn as a licensed artist. You can hear that question next, but in order to hear her answer, you have to go to elizabethsilver.com fresh and sign up for my newsletter where I give you access to my surface pattern boss toolkit which is totally free and it's a library full of resources and one of those resources is bonus videos so if you sign up for that which the link is in the description of this video you will be able to see her answer within my surface pattern boss toolkit um i have one more bonus question um which I am something that I'm always want to, you know, talk to, talk about in this industry, and also a question that I get a lot, um, which is that, you know, the main question people are wondering is, can I make a good living at licensing? And when people ask me that question, you know, all I can say is my own experience, you know, and, and who I've talked to, right? You know, so I haven't talked to every artist there is. I don't, you know, I don't know everything. Um, so I always just share my own experience, which is last year I took home $10,000 about that um, after, you know, you guys have your fee, which you well earn. And then I took home about $10,000. And this year it's going to be even less. That was a better year was last year, which, you know, 2020, we can't, I'll take what I can get. But um, so it's a small part of my income, but I'm not, you know, obviously I don't speak for every, every licensed artist. So as someone who has seen a multitude of different artists and what they're earning, um, if you were to crunch the sort of take home numbers for your artists and illustrator clients, what would you say is sort of the average like income or range or, you know, what, what could people expect? It was so helpful to hear Julie's answer to this question because obviously I do talk to other artists and I have my own experience, but she has way more data on the subject. So it was really illuminating to hear what she had to say. And if you are interested in what she had to say, you should check out my Surface Pattern Boss Toolkit where I have tons of resources. Well, right now, some resources, there will be more, and bonus videos. And you can find that at elizabethsilver.com fresh. If you like this video, I'm gonna be doing more interviews this year. So hit subscribe, like, share, and you can find all the information in the description about Artonimo and Showcase. So thanks again to Julie Newman.